and you're welcome to the Lady Amy Show. Well, every year on the 25th of November, we celebrate the birthday of our bishop and the father of the house, my husband, Bishop Ida Peterside. And this year, it's not different. We are celebrating his birthday again, and we're going to be talking to him on the show today. You're welcome, Bishop. Thank you, thank you. It's, my, it's not my birthday yet, it's my birthday is coming. Yes. So you, uh, it's exciting being with you. Have I ever done a Lady Amy show with you? Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yes, yes. And it's, it's you know, I'm one of your, in fact, I'll say I'm your biggest fan as mm -hmm. your wife and and the mother of your child. So I, I know you more than a lot of other folks do know. And, and I'm happy to say that you are still a great example to to us. And that is why I, I was privileged or happy to do this show with you and to ask you the questions that others probably are afraid to ask. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for you. And, uh, it's scary. It's scary that you, 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 you know, I'm talking to my wife. My wife is asking me questions. Yes. And I, I, anyway, I can't lie. So, yes. yeah, I'm excited. All right. Okay. Um, it's your birthday yeah. this week. And you've lived for a while. You've been with us. We see you every Sunday. You're on fire for God. You know, doing casting out demons and preaching. Are you always like that? You mean outside the church? Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm a very gentle man. <laughs> I, I, I like my life. I like to, I like to be alone. Okay. You should have noticed by now. Mm -hmm. I have very few friends. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to be alone. I like to. I like quiet places. I like just being quiet. You know, and then, um, but um, one of the things about me is that I observe. I'm very observant about my surroundings, about my environment, about what people say. You know, I'm attracted to activities all around me, and somehow, by the grace of God, uh, I try to uh, put them together in my mind. So that, that's just me. I'm not like how I am on Sunday, really, I'm not sure I am that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're not constantly under the anointing like 24 7. No, you'll be falling every day. <laughs> yeah. If I'm under that kind of anointing, then every time I touch you, every time I hold you, when we're together, you'll be slain in the spirit. Yes, uh, yes. I think a lot of people take it to the extreme. Mm. I think the power of God is it's useful when it is needed. Yes. It is like a footballer uh, wearing boots in his house. Mm -hmm. You know, dressing up with Jesse in his house. Yes. Oh, always yes. ready oh, to yes. play or oh, score yes. goals. No, it doesn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. A footballer gets dressed during matches. Mm -hmm. And I think I prepare for my own match. Yes. For, for, you, you, you've been with me mm -hmm. from Saturday. Saturday, yes. my, my mind begins to so center towards the service. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, my concentration is 100%. It builds up. Mm -hmm. It builds up from from Sunday, I mean from, from, from Sa Saturday. Okay. Mm -hmm. On Monday, I begin to think, what next message should I preach? Mm -hmm. I begin to ask God questions in my spirit. Mm -hmm. What am I going to speak about? What am I going to talk about? But I become, I, I observe my environment and what word somebody can say can trigger, can trigger and, uh, and the Holy Spirit will just drop that word and it will not leave my spirit mm -hmm. until I go and research and study and then I'm ready for Sunday. Okay. I noticed something about you is kind of strange. Like you like movies. Like I hardly know pastors who enjoy movies. Well, 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 th well thank you. I yeah. <laughs> you, you know, the act the act of not the movie itself. The act of not the movie itself. The act of the mind mm -hmm. of the person that writes the movie is what intrigues me. Mm. How can this person out of nothing, create something and put it in motion for people to act and it comes out spectacular. Mm -hmm. It is what intrigues me. Mm -hmm. It's been like that since I was a child. Mm -hmm. From childhood, I used to watch the cowboy movies 
and all that. So it intrigues me how these people act these movies or write the movies. And so when I do, and when I watch movies, you know, mm-hmm. I don't like noise around me. Yes. You don't even greet me. You don't even come to me. You don't even say anything. Why? It is my moment to think. It is my moment to, 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 to analyze situations. So it's for me, it's my quiet moment. Even though there's shooting guns and making noise, it is more quieter for me than uh, being in a very quiet place. It's odd, but mm. that's me. Mm. And some of the pastors will think that that's not a very spiritual thing. That's their business. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they do in secret. <laughs> I don't know what calms them down. I know uh, my friend uh, Tudor Bismarck mm-hmm. watches football. Mm-hmm. He's crazy about his Liverpool. Mm-hmm. He watches football. I know uh, uh, my friend Apostle Zili Agri. Mm-hmm. He's crazy about wrestling. Wrestling, yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. The, the work we do, sometimes you need to take your mind off um, the work extremely. You just mm-hmm. need to go on that side mm-hmm. for you to be able to recharge. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you can't do church and you come back church and you come back church, you'll be worn out. You'll just, you know, it's like somebody eating pap every day. Yeah. After a while, you, you, you get tired. Mm. So I, I think it's the way, for me, the movies, my watching of movies is the way I switch off from the job mm. and get myself uh, occupied and my mind occupied. Mm. So what would you say, what would you advise other pastors? Or how do you think a pastor can relax? I think some pastors tend to be very uptight. Mm. Mm. Well, everyone has a call. Everyone has a call and everyone has a life. Mm-hmm. It would be very um, wrong of me to tell, teach somebody how to live their lives. But I just think my advice would be um, get, get something that frees your mind. Mm-hmm. Get something. If you want like to take a walk, I know of uh, uh, Adeboy. Mm-hmm. You know, they said that Adeboy loves boxing. Wow. You know, it's all of us have something <laughs> that, yeah, he loves boxing. That mm. once they begin to box, you know, he's like ready and trying to box with the boxers. Yes. You know, he just keeps him. The same thing with my father. Yeah. My father was a preacher. Mm-hmm. You know, my father would watch boxing upon boxing. Mm-hmm. And uh, surprisingly, this is a violent sport. Yeah. And uh, boy, that's what he loved to watch. Yeah. For me, for me, I, I love movies. Yeah. Yes. So, I've seen you. You're mm. always happy. Yeah. Or at least you try always to be happy. <laughs> do pastors get depressed? And if so, how do they? Yes. Pastors get a lot dis- depressed. Mm. A- again, when you, especially when you put in so much. Mm-hmm. People don't know what we put in behind us. Mm-hmm. What we put in the time we fast, the time we pray, the time we study the word. And especially the most difficult part of being a pastor is your prayer life. Yeah. Because prayer is a form of madness. Mm. Okay? In the sense that you you are in your room praying. You, you are crazy. You you don't know whom you're talking to. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. Somebody if you would talk if you would talk outside or just keep talking, people will think you've lost your mind. Yeah. So prayer is the most difficult of them all. Mm-hmm. Reading, you can refresh yourself. Mm-hmm. Doing every other thing you can refresh yourself. But the most the loneliest part that's of true. Christianity or being a pastor is the time of prayer. Yeah. Then you just sit in a room for one hour and you talk. Mm-hmm. You're just talking, makalaba, salaba, mm-hmm. or you're praying, Father. You, you, you think you are not normal. Mm-hmm. That's the most difficult part. Now, the challenge of depression of why people are disappointed is after putting all this hour, all mm-hmm. this time, mm-hmm. maybe as a pastor, you have a, a you, you hope you're okay, you're starting your congregation. 200 or thereabout. Mm-hmm. You have cheers for 200 people. They say <laughs> apply faith for 200 people. You've applied mm-hmm. your faith. Mm-hmm. And you come on a Sunday morning, you have 30 people. Yeah. You have 20 people. You are mm-hmm. asking God. I thought you said you will bring them. Mm-hmm. You know, if I commit myself. So it's quite frustrating. Absolutely mm-hmm. frustrating. Another thing that frustrates a pastor is when members leave you. Yeah. Especially when you've poured your heart out to people. Mm-hmm. You've trained people. You've taken people as your sons and your daughters. Mm-hmm. The danger of this ministry, the closer they get to you, 
the easier for them to leave you. Mm. I don't know why it works that way. Yeah. Every person that I've drawn close, be it a male or a female or a young person that you want to pour your heart into, mm. boom, they just walk out. And the ones that don't talk to you, the ones that don't fellowship with you, this the thing. ones that you greet from far, you find out they're there nine years, ten years. Mm. And once you get close to them, they leave. Yeah, I think it's some aspect of familiarity. Well, I think so. I think the familiarity is part of it. Mm. And uh, so sometimes when pastors don't want to be fa familiar, mm. people complain mm. that your pastor is distant from you. Mm. But, you know, in Nigeria, they say, there's a, a proverb say, see, finish. Yes. You know, <laughs> once they've seen everything about you, mm. they've, they, they, they just know you, the familiarity mm. steps in. Mm. And as that familiarity steps in, your value in their eyes they diminishes. They diminish. And you see them, boy, oh, when one pastor comes, they're screaming about the pastor. Mm. Or when they hear you, they are talking about TD Jakes and mm. talking about Benny mm. Hinn and, mm. and they are talking about people they don't even know. Mm. Why? Because they've not seen these people. They're not familiar with these people. That's right. Therefore, they honor them more. And it's, mm. it's quite disappointing. As a pastor, I've seen you. Most of those questions I know the answers to, but I just want us to share with others. So, have you ever been in a tight corner that God didn't show up, where God didn't show up? Um, there's a scripture that, that, that has helped me a lot. Yes. And that scripture is, my ways are not your ways. Mm -hmm. As the heavens are, are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Mm -hmm. There are expectations that I have. Mm -hmm. There are uh, faiths that I pull. I, mm -hmm. I stretch myself by faith to a particular level. Mm -hmm. But I don't see those things happen. Mm -hmm. Naturally, you will get disappointed. Mm -hmm. But he says, my ways are not your ways. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's my comfort. Mm -hmm. My ways are not your ways. You know? So if you think that's how it should be, and God says, that's not my ways, because he's my boss, I've gotten to the, yes, I'm absolutely disappointed. There are prayers, people that I've prayed for. And in my heart, 100%, I think they will be healed. Mm -hmm. There are uh, situations where you will see uh, a, a person just walks in casually mm -hmm. and begins to manifest. Mm -hmm. And we always know in the deliverance ministry, the higher the person shouts, mm -hmm. the easier for the devil to go. Mm -hmm. you, you know, because there's an anointing that has put pressure on this devil mm -hmm. or this demon. You expect that demon to go immediately. When they don't go, those ones take longer. And yeah. uh, you expect, no, I'm doing the right thing. I'm, this, this devil should go. Mm. And the devil just sit down and say, you've not seen anything. <laughs> it takes you hours to cast out spirits. So it's, it's it, here or there. So sometimes that kind of challenge mm. is difficult to, to comprehend. Mm. Another challenge we, we face or I, I face in, in ministry is the issue of finance. Mm -hmm. The issue of finance and... Um, Especially when you see uh, that God has blessed people mm -hmm. in your ministry. Mm. I've always told this story, quite disappointing. Mm. You know, a young man came to me and said, uh, thank you for your prayers, this and that. That's this week you declare that those owing you, do the favor of God. Will follow. And he was so sure that it was the grace that provided that funds. So he tells me, ah, somebody paid me, that was owing me, paid me 1.6 million and I wasn't even expecting it. The person gave me the money with an apology. In my head, I've calculated my tithes. <laughs> yeah. I've calculated that the person must give a thousand, one hundred and sixty thousand. Mm. And at that point, we were looking for money to pay for things. Mm, mm, and mm. this guy kept coming to church, but did not pay his tithes. Mm. And you're like, God, why don't we take this money from him? <laughs> you know, I should pray out the money from him. Yes. So many people think, you know, when they talk about pastors, mm. they say money, 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 but you, they need to really ask questions. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm. How many pastors do really have money? Yes. How many pastors fly jets? Mm. How many pastors pay their bills? There are pastors we all know, mm -hmm. they can't even pay their rent. Mm -hmm. You know, they spend money in the church and mm. look after the church you know, it costs for us. I've always mm -hmm. said it costs us uh, our budget almost 300 and something thousand. Mm -hmm. And people expect you to have it mm -hmm. because they see the crowd. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the offering envelope, people are giving 10 rand, 5 mm -hmm. rand. Mm -hmm. You, you mm -hmm. know, yesterday something happened in the church and yes. the devil almost got me. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked at the, the members of the church. I mm -hmm. just looked at 
all I saw was poverty. Oh. You understand? <laughs> yeah. I saw people dressed, not dressed in top class dressing. Mm. I saw people not dressed the way you would go to there are some churches. You go, everyone is wearing mm. suits, mm. top class suits yeah. and all that. But the Holy Ghost just ministered to me. Mm. When I saw the hundreds of people mm. and a depression wanted to hit me mm. while I was in the microphone just yesterday. Whoa. You know, and I had the Holy Ghost said, this is nice. Mm. I said, how nice is this? Mm. He said, this is your assignment. Yeah. Make them rich. Amen. Change their lives. Mm. I got my zeal, came back. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm. So, wow, this is my assignment. God has trusted me mm. to change the lives of these people. But the disappointing thing is that when these people's lives are changed, they never come to show appreciation either to God or to the ministry. Very disappointing. Mm. We do desire and hope that as we go on ministry, people would learn yeah. these things. But as in your own life, would you? Is there most times when you you receive your the the amount for the offering every week? Do you sometimes get disappointed? Do you say, "Oh, we didn't make enough money as we as the for the every ministry week. every week"? Every week okay, every week, every week. but somehow, do God you God shows up? Yes, that, that's where that's, I'm going. That's the beauty of God. My mm -hmm. friend in Durban says something. Mm -hmm. One, he said it that I, I, I'm not happy with God, mm -hmm. and I got scared. Mm -hmm. You know, I got scared thinking that he's about to backslide or he's yes. about to give up on God. Yes. And I said, "What is wrong?" He said. Why does God behave like this? Mm -hmm. I said, what did he do? He said, I need money. Mm. But I know he will give it to me. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm sure. Say that, look, I'm telling you, I know the money I'm expecting will come. Mm. But why is he wasting time mm. to give me this money? <laughs> he should have just given me the money. So the guy that I said, he wants to build your faith. He said, leave this in a half faith. <laughs> what is he building again? Now, these are different stories that you hear from from men of men God, of God. Mm. yeah, sometimes it encourages you mm. that you're not alone in this and that God is just always proving yes. that he's the boss. He's the boss. Mm. And he always shows up. Oh, he does show up. I said it yesterday mm. that uh, when I preached on Anakatsu that God would mark pressure. Mm -hmm. And you know, years ago, God spoke something to me. Mm. God asked me to give somebody uh, something, a gift, big gift. Yes. And I was like, oh, mm. please, God. Mm -hmm. God left me, came back the next week, mm -hmm. give this person this gift. Mm -hmm. And I held back. Then he said to me, do you see how difficult? Even you that is my son, you know my voice. Mm -hmm. You know how, see how difficult it is for you to give some, somebody something. Mm -hmm. He said, so many times I ask people to bless you or bless the ministry. It takes them this long. I might have given them the command the first month mm -hmm. or the first week. It takes this long. I need to put pressure, pressure. It is not that I've not had your prayer. It is not that I don't want to help you. But the convincing is the problem. Say, my children don't listen. They don't listen. Mm. I have to convince them. Sometimes the conviction will take six months, five months, and most of them will refuse to obey me. And some will obey me. So it's, that's just the sequence with God. And uh, as you grow older in the things of the faith, you begin to understand God better. Okay, what is your, what is your, what would you say about prosperity in a Christian con it's in context? It's not what I say. I don't <laughs> preach, I don't preach what I desire. I just read the scripture this morning. Yes. And it's in the book of Genesis chapter 12. Mm -hmm. He said God called Abraham and he said this, mm -hmm. and God blessed him. Mm -hmm. And he was rich in cattle, mm -hmm. in goats, and in sheep. Mm -hmm. And God blessed him. Mm -hmm. The word is that God blessed him. So what are we discussing prosperity? Mm. Prosperity is the blessings of God. And the Bible says he make it rich mm. and adds no sorrow. Mm -hmm. So there is no, there is no, um, Satan is fighting the message because the most dangerous man you can have is a righteous man and a rich man. Mm. A rich righteous man. A rich righteous man. A rich righteous man. Satan is in trouble. Why? The man is guaranteed heaven. Mm -hmm. And he will change lives. Yes. Satan hates that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why prosperity message has been attacked. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your fire up? I'm afraid of hell. <laughs> I, I want to please Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, some years ago, you know, I've had experiences mm -hmm. 
some years ago. The Lord spoke to me, and uh, I was upstairs somewhere, and they were preparing for a party. Mm -hmm. And that party had, uh, they were using this old pot, you know, this native pot where you put natural fire. Yes. So I was upstairs by my balcony looking at this cooking while they were cooking. And as they were cooking, I, I saw the fire mm -hmm. dwindling. Mm -hmm. And these women came with firewood. Yes. And they put the wood. Immediately they put the wood, poof, the fire came up. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. And he says, you are the water inside. The pot. The pot. If you don't put the wood, mm. you will not be ready to be eaten or ready to be used. Mm -hmm. So the more wood you put, the more prepared the water or the food is. Yes. You understand? Mm -hmm. The more prepared or the food is. So what I do, firstly, you must live holy. Yeah. Holiness, then prayer, and the reading of the word, mm -hmm. and fellowship. Mm -hmm. These are the three Four things that put your fire burning. You must read the word of God. You must pray. You must fellowship. People are forgetting that fellowship is absolutely necessary. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. He said, neglect not the gathering of men, brethren. People think they can sit in the house mm -hmm. and, uh, and be Christians. Mm -hmm. Once you're a Christian that sits in the house, you're a backslider. Yeah. I've always used no drunkard. Mm -hmm. Drink, no drunkard drinks at home. Mm. Every drunkard goes to the pub. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of fellowship. Mm -hmm. Beer is not nice drinking alone at home. That's you right. go and hang out with your friends, carry your six pack, you call your friends. <laughs> this is beer fellowship. Yeah. And the beer is sweeter. Mm -hmm. The same thing with God. You know, for we are brethren are gathered God. There God commanded his blessing. Okay. So this is what keeps me going. All right. So let's talk about friends do you have friends uh very few very few very few um i, I think very few i have acquaintances mm -hmm. i have people that i know mm -hmm. but if i count friendship mm -hmm. um, i don't have more than five mm -hmm. you know I've, i have friends in the faith mm -hmm. i have f friends then i have friends in sports yes that's how my friendship is mm -hmm. but for the people that can walk into my room mm. and if i'm not there my wife is there uh, they will have the confidence to sit in my parlor and talk to my wife or mm -hmm. just just my wife mm. they are not more than three okay yes okay so what would you say that you have what is the when i say the most important thing that you have achieved not achieved learned in life yes up until this moment mm. wow that's or it. some of the most important things or some is some that, that's a very difficult question mm. I, I have come to learn that uh, uh, that you you are not weak when you are humble yes i've learned that that humility is strength mm. and not weakness. Mm. Number two, I've learned that it doesn't profit me to be angry or to keep malice. Yes. I try as much as possible. You know, I, till now, I'm not sure there's a human being in my life that I'm angry with. Really, genuinely. I'm not sure there's anyone I'm angry with. So I've learned in my life to... I've learned in my life just to live, live at peace mm -hmm. with everyone. And it takes, absolutely takes the pressure mm -hmm. off me. Mm. A whole lot of things I've learned in life, you mm. know, a whole lot of things just... In marriage, uh, let's, let's take it... Um, in marriage? Yeah. So we're talking about you now. Yes. I, uh, <laughs> in marriage. Mm. Um, in, in marriage, I, I, I think we, we need to... We need to respect one another. Mm -hmm. I think it is important we respect one another. I respect you mm -hmm. as my wife. And I try as much as possible to, to, to let you have your say. Because I've always believed that control is witchcraft. Yeah. You know, if I say, do that, do this, go here, do that for me, it's absolute witchcraft. 
and I've learned in marriage that uh, I must give yes. to receive. I must give myself. And to you, you will judge me, okay? You're my wife. Mm -hmm. If I'm saying things that I'm that is is wrong, I've mm -hmm. learned all that to live at peace mm -hmm. with my wife. It, pay, it does not pay me, you know, to always be uh, uh, <laughs> harsh and hard and and difficult. And I'm not sure it does pay. It doesn't pay me in any which way. Okay, mm. financially, in marriage or in life, financially. Yeah, in financially. Gen generally, financially, what's 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 lesson have you come? What you say? But this I have learned. You must mm. respect money. Yes, you must respect money. Money flies. Mm. Money has wings. If you don't respect money, you will you will be poor. In the sense, I didn't say worship money. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of people spend more than they earn. They spend more than they earn. A lot of people waste money. Yeah. I teach even in the church. I've done two mm -hmm. books on money already. Mm -hmm. uh, why you need money. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, a lot of people don't respect money. Because they don't respect money, they don't value money. Mm -hmm. They spend money carelessly. Yes. It is absolutely wrong. You know, people don't save. Mm -hmm. People don't respect or put value on money. They they expect they spend more than the more than their income mm -hmm. because they want to please people because mm -hmm. they want to make people like them I don't know mm -hmm. you know so we, you must respect money and in respecting money you you value money and you plan mm -hmm. I, I plan you know me I plan yes yes, yes. yes. There, there's no spending that comes out of my pocket I do not. Plan for, plan for it. Mm -hmm. It's not just in my own individual life. Mm -hmm. Even as even if in the ministry, mm -hmm. I don't just spend ministry money because somebody has a problem or somebody yes. has a need. I have a budget, mm -hmm. and I have to plan towards that budget to make sure that uh, the ministry is well run. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it has saved me. We've been seventeen years pastoring the church. We've not borrowed money from anyone. We've not been in debt. We we've not had. A, a, a month where we say we couldn't meet our bills because of proper planning. Okay, so two more. So what have you learned in relationship and then lastly in uh, in your faith with, and your work with God? Well, in, rela in relationship, there are very few trusted people. Mm -hmm. Very, very few trusted people. There are people that are, a, a lot of people that call your, themselves your friends are not trustworthy, mm -hmm. especially when you get into trouble. Especially when you are this, when you are when there's a need or where there's problems or where you have a need, very few friends show up. And uh, I've always told people, which is what I preach, and I tell myself, friends are so important that anyone God sends to you as a friend, you must value that friend and respect and respect that friendship. It is very important that you value that friendship and you respect that friendship, and it's reciprocal. Mm. And uh, in ministry, the second question is what? In your faith and work with God, what's, what have you learned? I, I've come to understand that God is in charge. Yes. You know, God is in control. This thing that people think that uh, as a pastor, you are, no, 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 no. God is in control. Because if, if I were in control, you know, I would, I would raise my hand and ask God to put 10 million rand. Mm. in my account mm. but he will not do that mm. but God because he's in control he might give you sparingly give you 50 give you 70 you know you remember the children of Israel he told them that there will be quails or there will mm. be manna mm. but take enough for mm. that day, for that day. <laughs> and when it is weekend I will take enough for the weekend mm. and that's how God works mm. because you know years ago I, I, I was asking God to give me money mm -hmm. After a while, I stopped praying that prayer. I said, God, I'm sorry. Mm. Because if you give me the money I'm looking for, mm. I will lose my faith. Mm. You understand? Mm. If I, $100 million now, what will I do with it? Mm. You understand? I will start, I'm not sure I will even read the Bible. <laughs> I will take off to uh, uh, Jamaica this week, buy a private jet next week. <laughs> Before you, you, you know it, the essence of the work that God has given to you will mm. suffer. Mm. But if God gives you as you go, Mm. Gives you a nice car, give you a, a nice house. Mm. These things are, are, are manageable, and uh, you can you can manage them as you go. 
Well, we could go on and on. It's good to talk to you, Bishop, because, I mean, there's a lot to learn. But I'd like you to maybe give an advice and a prayer to somebody on this occasion of your birthday. Just advice and prayer. Well, uh, my, my advice would, it would be, maybe I'm talking to believers here. Mm -hmm. uh, my advice would be, we cannot lose focus. The reason why he saved us is for us to spend eternity with him. Yes. We cannot lose focus. Eternity is the reason for our Christianity. Mm -hmm. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. He said, and I will come again mm -hmm. and take you. That where I am, you shall be also. So eternity for me is key. Yes. So as you lead your life and do whatever you do here on earth, never lose your, your salvation mm -hmm. and love one another. Love is the key. Mm -hmm. You must you must forgive. Yes. You know, you must forgive easily. You must learn how to forgive easily and not keep offense. You know, offense is a killer. So many people are angry with God, angry with their neighbor, angry with their brothers, angry with their sisters, and they're offended. Mm -hmm. And I think to live a, a fruitful life here on earth, we must live out offense. And I think once we do that, we are guaranteed to see Jesus when, mm -hmm. when he comes, which is my a life ambition. Yes. My dream in this world that I live. Every passing day, I, I'm celebrating my, my birthday this weekend. Where I'm getting closer to seeing Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> whether you like it or not. Yeah. And I want to see him. And my life dream and ambition is one day he will say to me, well done, that good and faithful summer. That's my, that's my prayer. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for being on the show. And happy birthday once again. Thank you for having me. And again, uh, for all those that have been wishing me happy birthdays, I see already on the social media people have been wishing birthdays. My sons and my daughters in the faith, children in the church, thank you for the love you've shown me all these years. And I want to say, may God continue to bless you and, and expand you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us on the show. We've been talking with the bishop and God bless you. I hope to see you next time on the Lady Amy Show.